Welcome to today's edition of the Everlast Power Video Series. In this edition, we'll present another informational video about the stick welding process. This time, we will be stick welding stainless steel. We'll be using premium grade Red Baron 316L stainless electrodes from Lincoln for today's demonstration. The welder we'll be using is the 2012 Power Arc 300 from Everlast. Look for the all new 2013 Power Arc 300 coming in early June. To set up the welder correctly, you should use DC positive polarity for welding stainless. This is also known as reverse polarity. The torch should be connected to the positive terminal. Be sure to select the far left negative terminal for the work clamp on the Power Arc 300. The 6010 feature is not needed for stainless. Stainless steel electrodes are similar to low hydrogen steel electrodes and should be kept in a rod oven or used fresh from a sealed container like this one. We will be using a 1 8 inch diameter electrode for the demonstration. Premium electrode brands such as the Red Baron are trackable through a lot number because of their uses in specialized applications such as marine and food service industries. 316 grade stainless is a non-magnetic austenitic stainless steel. It's often selected because of its high corrosion resistance and overall toughness. 316L is a variant form of 316 and is often preferred and used because of its low carbon content. 316 or 316L electrodes should always be used to weld 316 stainless steels. Per the manufacturer's direction, the amp range for 18316 is 60 to 100 amps. We will begin by tacking at about 76 amps. During the tacking process, the amp seemed a little low but was sufficient to make a good tack weld on each end. To make the first section of the weld, we have increased the current to 82 amps. This is the first pass on the 8 inch stainless plate. It still seems a little cold, but the metal does flow smoothly from the electrode. Notice that we used a slight oscillation of the electrode to help stabilize the arc and force the metal to flow smoothly to both sides of the plate. The slag is very heavy on most stainless electrodes and you must pay close attention to rod angle and motion to prevent the slag from running in front of the electrode. Here the heavy slag coating is being chipped off the first segment of the weld. It should come off easily. If the amps are set perfectly, it may self-release. Once again, we are readjusting the current. We are increasing it to 90 amps. This is the second segment of the weld with the readjusted current. Notice how the arc stability has improved. To prevent slag entrapment and porosity under the weld surface, you must keep a short arc length. Once again, it's worth mentioning that the slag is quite heavy. It may take some practice to keep it from flowing under or in front of the filler metal. If slag tracks form, try a slight weave and increase the well current in 5 amp increments. Here you can see how smooth the weld is. If you do not have a smooth weld with stainless, try increasing the amps. Don't increase them too much because stainless will begin to flow uncontrollably. 
When you restart a stainless steel rod, it's likely that you will need to remove a little flux to get a clean restart. Don't remove too much or you will end up with porosity. We're about to finish the final weld segment. Here's a close-up of the final result. The results demonstrate that stick welding can yield excellent results on thicker stainless materials. If done properly, they can be aesthetically appealing as well. Here in the final video segment, we have included a close-up shot of the stainless welding during one of the weld segments so that you can get a better view of the arc and the weld pool. We appreciate you watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments about welding or Everlast products, please give us a call at the number listed above.